Hi, my name is Kevin, and today I'm going to talk about the theory of constraints. It's not directly related to software architecture, but I'd like to talk about it because it's a simple concept you can use in your software development shop and in real life to generally improve or understand the project management aspect of your software development process. Let's check it out. What do these have in common? First, you have people waiting in line. Then you have people preparing sandwiches. Then you have people paying for stuff. They're all processes, just like software development is a process from requirements, development, testing, and deployment. The theory of constraints is a helpful tool that helps make processes like these more efficient. However, instead of talking about the process in a supermarket or software development even, let's use cakes to illustrate how the theory of constraint works. Say you own a bakery and you make cakes. Let's say your bakery has generally four steps in the process, ordering, baking, decorations, and cashier. So if a customer orders one cake, the bakery will bake one cake, decorate one cake, and receive payment for one cake. Let's say that it takes one minute to process an order, 10 minutes to bake it, eight minutes to decorate it, and one minute to pay for it. It's not hard to see that most of the time, customers will be waiting for the baking to complete. If you look carefully, it takes 20 minutes for a single cake order to go through. As the owner of the bakery shop, what is the goal of your bakery? To maximize and to produce as many cakes as possible. I mean, what's the point of having a bakery if not to make more cakes? And who doesn't like cakes anyway? So how can we produce more cakes? We can do this using the five steps in the theory of constraints. Number one, identify the constraint. First, identify all of the constraints of the system. A constraint is sometimes called the bottleneck. It constrains the maximum output your system can produce. So in the case of this bakery, the constraint is the oven in the baking step. Another way to identify the constraint is if you see a pile of work needing to be done before the step. In this case, there's a long list of work to be done before the baking step. So that kind of points to baking being the constraint. Whenever you see things pile up in front like that, there is a waste in one form or another. It could be considered a waste of the customer's time, waiting for the order to complete. They might decide to cancel the order if it takes too long. It could be considered a waste for the bakery, because you could be producing more cakes instead. Either way, it's a waste. Another thing to point out is that your system cannot go faster than your constraints. So in the best case scenario, your bakery will never produce more than one cake every 10 minutes. Anyway, now that we've identified the constraint, what's the next step? Step number two, make your constraint efficient. The next step is to just make the cake baking process more efficient. Do this by improving and making the constraint as efficient as you can. So let's say you increased the efficiency in the baking stage so that it is now seven minutes per cake. How fast can the bakery produce cakes now? It's eight minutes per cake because the decorating phase still makes one cake every eight minutes. To improve the efficiency of the system, you need to also improve the efficiency of the decorating step. So let's improve the efficiency of the decorating step. Say it is now five minutes per cake because you found a new way to decorate cakes. So say we've improved the efficiency of the baking and decorating steps to the maximum possible. The bottleneck is still in the baking step. Based on this, we know that the bakery cannot produce more than seven minutes per cake. Not much has improved, it seems like. Orders will still pile up in front of the constraint. What now? Well, let's move on to the next step. Step number three is to subordinate everything to the constraint. Since we know the system can best produce seven minutes per cake, the next step is to subordinate everything to that. What it means that, to eliminate waste, the input of your system should match the rate of your constraint. So in this example, the orders in the bakery should match the orders in your baking step. That means don't take more than one cake order every seven minutes. This means we only accept orders at a rate of seven minutes per cake. To accept any more orders than that will introduce waste, which we don't like. Okay, we've subordinated everything to the constraint. What now? Step four, alleviate the constraint. To alleviate the constraint means to find the constraint and throw extra resources at it. Since the baking step is the constraint, 
Now it's time to add more resources to it by buying a new oven. This reduces the time to bake a cake from seven minutes to three and a half minutes. Step number five, check and fix constraints. This is the adjust step. So what this means is, if there is a new constraint, keep going through the process from step one all the way to step five. So here, well, we have a new constraint. So now we have to go back to step one. So step five is the last step in the process. However, there are some additional things to consider though. First of all, why not get the person doing the ordering or the person working the cash register to help with the decorating or the baking? Yes, that's another way to improve the process and eliminate waste. In fact, you see this happen in some restaurants. For example, maybe the cashier helps out with the decorating. And in doing so, the time to pay for it is a little longer, but the time to decorate is shorter. If you're familiar with Kanban, you might see similarities there as well. In this case, your Kanban board would reflect the various stages of the process. The WIP, or work in progress, limits are applied to prevent waste. I'll talk about Kanban in more detail another time. You could also wonder, what if someone wants a large cake or a small cake? In that case, you would do one cake. So a large cake would be like three regular ones worth of work. A medium cake would be like two cakes worth of work, and so on. I know I talked about a bakery instead of a software development team, but I think you'll agree that there are many parallels in both instances and that the theory of constraints can be used successfully in both. For more information, check out this book, The Goal, by Eliyahu Goldratt. Well, that's all I had about the theory of constraints. I hope this helps with your software development somehow. Please remember to hit like and subscribe. I hope you had a good day, and I'll see you in the next video.